Okay, hello everybody and welcome to the continuation from the previous video of Let's Make uh, for Arma 3. We will be continuing to make um, the training session mission or the shooting range mission that we have uh, started in the, in the last video. And uh, this one is pr pretty much a voluntary continuation of what we have done uh, previously. I will make several more effects for the for the player's shooting experience and I'll also change uh, how the AI shoots as well and that will be pretty much what uh, is my primary aim for this. Now of course uh, to do that I have to use uh, many commands and I have to also change some of the commands that I have used earlier and I was really trying to make the mission look uh, really similar to the first one but better in every single way that I have changed so you should be really uh, very content with the with the results and of course I had to make several uh, I had to make several changes and I had to use several commands that I have never talked about in my tutorials or anywhere really on the channel and th th you know that's the part it's it's a bit more advanced than what I usually do on my channel so of course uh, some of the commands may be unknown to you but you can all you can find them all on the uh, wiki pages and on the internet just in general and I'll also try to describe you what the command does in these situations so I suppose that you have seen the previous video for uh, the basic template of this mission so I don't have to go a command by command and unit by unit of course the entire mission is already done it's already uh, made so that I don't have to figure things out while uh, being on camera and I don't have to waste your guys time so I'm gonna just remind you basically really quickly what the mission is doing and what it is all about and then we we could uh, pr we could move straight to the scripts and then we could preview the mission and really talk about what is going on in there and how the actual commands are influencing the the mission and the player's experience with the mission so i will start really quickly we have the player's unit he is coming to his team leader who is over here his name is officer then we have three triggers that are controlling the uh, dialogue with the officer uh, basically the first dialogue that he's gonna be uh, in is like some introduction so he's gonna tell him about the shooting range and that the player should move to the uh, cargo box over here uh, the second dialogue that we have already made is when the player goes uh, to the to the target practice and then returns back and in that case the officer will tell him to go back and shoot some more and the third one ends the mission with the short message good job and it's basically just to end the mission itself it has no other purpose then we have two ai soldiers shooting at their targets that they that they have uh, over here uh, the first one is named soldier and he is targeting the target uh, with this name and uh, that is of course being done by a script i've talked about that in the previous video i have the game logic and i'm using an action uh, that basically makes the logic pull the trigger for the soldier and the soldier is just aiming at his target and the game is shooting for him at the same time the soldiers these soldiers will never run out of ammo because i have added event handlers to them uh, you can see that right now event handler uh, fired and i'm basically adding ammo every single time he shoots so that is all uh, stuff that you already know and see and so in the in the previous video as well uh, one thing that I have added extra is this trigger over here and it's basically a very special trigger we can click on it right now and it's a trigger that uh, calls the Bohemian interactive function on tracing bullets and you can see that it's set to uh, repeatedly and the condition is um, two things player is laser on uh, primary weapon player that means that I'm basically controlling his primary weapon and I'm asking for the I for the IR laser and if that laser is on 
then this first part of the condition is true. And at the same time, I have to know that um, if, if he has the right goggles. So basically, if he has the virtual reality goggles that we have talked about in the previous video a lot, those are the goggles that enable you to see all the holograms and stuff. If he has those goggles and he has the laser on, then this entire condition is true and we can go to the on activation box. That basically calls the trace bullets on the player's unit without any special uh, conditions or any special effects. That's the basic, it's the most basic um, tracing bullets. It works, you you have already seen that many times in the in the virtual reality training programs. They use that a lot in there. And what I'm doing on the activation of the trigger, uh, so that's when he takes off the glasses or he shuts down the laser. Uh, basically, I'm calling the function again, but this time I'm changing the arguments and I'm changing them. Um, I'm calling that again on the player, but this time I have added this zero over here and that means how many traces are actually drawn on the screen. And by changing them to zero, I've basically deleted all the traces on the screen. So that's um, pretty much how to how to delete the effect or how to take it away from the player's unit. Um, I'm just calling it again, but this time with zero traces. So the the whole function basically ends. And because I have set the whole trigger to repeatedly, that means that every single time uh, these two conditions are true, the tracing bullet uh, is working, and every time at least one of these conditions is false, uh, the tracing bullet is disabled. So it works uh, multiple times during the mission. That's really useful. And we are, we are going to see that at the end when I'm going to uh, preview the mission and show you how that all really works. So nothing really changed in this section of the of the mission i think that i have left pretty much everything on its place as it was and i have just uh, made some improvements for the scripts and i have added some stuff in the scripts themselves so as nothing has changed i think that we can go right for the scripts and i'm gonna explain all the important stuff there then we are gonna go back here and uh, look at the mission how it looks and i'm gonna tell you uh, what the actual changes do and how the how the commands are displayed in the mission itself. Uh, let's go uh, right to the scripts. I'm gonna see you there. Okay, welcome back. Um, this is these are the scripts of the mission, and we are gonna go through uh, each one of them, and I'll show you exactly what has changed since the last time, and I'm gonna explain all the new commands. I suppose that. I don't have to go through all the commands, like you already know what sleep command does or uh, that uh, basically this camera creation is really easy and simple and it's basically automatic and I've just added a few lines uh, at the start and at the, at the end with the camera creation and uh, camera destruction. So um, the first script that we are going to have a look at is the cutscene script. It's launched right after the start of the mission at the basic introduction of the of the officer or the team leader. And at the start we have a, a short break, short pause, because uh, right with the script we are launching the, or we are creating the text on the screen. So we have to have a little bit of a pause between that and the and the actual text. So we are sleeping for three seconds, then we are creating a camera. This is the first uh, uh, position of the camera. It's really uh, near the, it's near the team leader, and it's it's made with the camera old function that I have talked about in previous videos. Uh, basically, every single video with cameras should contain at least some information about that script. So uh, these are all just copied, and uh, in between those lines, I have just added the title text with uh, the individual texts. So there's absolutely nothing uh, really difficult. It's just the camera. I could add more camera shots and something, but I don't really um, know how to work with cameras effectively. And for the, for the purposes of this video, I think that this is just enough. 
for you to give you an idea of what can be done. Let's move on. The description.txt is exactly the same as in the basic mission. I haven't added anything more. I think that that's not really needed. I mean, the description.txt is a pretty strict file and you can't add a completely custom stuff. You will really have to follow some basic rules. So I don't want to mess with that. This is enough for the basic idea and you can add more stuff anytime. Uh, let's go more. Uh, in the SQF, it will be a better script for now. Um, we can see that basically I have left pretty much all the stuff the same. I have just changed one condition over here and I'm not sleeping for 0.3 seconds. I'm just waiting until the time is other than zero. And that's because uh, the variable or or the command time that we are using here, uh, it returns for how long the mission has been played or playing. And I don't want to wait a static 0.3 seconds. That might be too much in some cases. And perhaps the player has already pressed some buttons and now he's messing up with the introduction and the cutscene at the start. So I'm waiting for the for the total initialization of the entire mission. While the time is zero, it means that the mission hasn't really started yet, the, all, all the objects aren't even loaded, the mission is processing itself. So once that starts ticking and the mission is actually start, uh, starting to show on the screen, we can already go through these, uh, through these commands. So that is what we are doing here. here and all the other stuff is the same. We are again calling the cinema borders at the very start and then after a few seconds we are again using two variables to monitor what the uh, what the team leader should say and we are um, we are launching two scripts for the AI units and one script for the player. This is pretty much exactly the same. So we can move on to the next one. This is the shooting script. And this is already a little bit different and you can see that the script has gotten a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more interesting. So let's go through the individual um, lines over here. So at the start I have again two parameters over here. I'm using the soldier and target to mark um, the individual objects that I'm gonna be working with and then I have uh, the basic loop over here while the player is alive um, will do all of this stuff So at the start of the entire loop, I'm making a random number you can see that uh, the number is anything from 0 to 8 and right after that I round the number up so that should be in most cases uh, from 1 to 8 and it will be an integer, a, a whole number. And then I add 1. So it will be from um, 2 to 9. Yeah, 2 to 9. Okay. In some rare cases it might be 1 to 9. But we would have to get an absolute 0 from over, uh, from over here. And that is very unlikely. Uh, and it won't destroy our script anyway. So that's... Uh, a positive number maximum is 9 it's also a whole number and we are now using a second loop over here uh, while this uh, created number that we have just made is more than 2 we will do um, this stuff over here to the line 13 uh, so basically this is the shooting now and we are using a little bit different algorithm than before before we are just repeating the command over and over in a static uh, in a static way now we are using two times and we are uh, creating more like rounds for the soldiers so let's see what it does um, basically we have just generated a number let's say it's seven for example and now we are going through this condition seven is more than two we can go through the commands uh, so at the start, we we have uh, the number itself is now one less. So we have seven and 
um, now we make six out of these seven and we go on sleep for a little while and make the soldier target his target that is all passed by the by the parameters into the script and then we use the weapon just the same way as before what is different now we are just looping this little loop over here so basically um, it is much more quick because we are just waiting 0.2 seconds and we are also working with random numbers over here so um, uh, right now we have the 6 and we go again to the condition uh, uh, right here on the line 7 and we ask again is 6 more than 2 it is so add minus 1 to the 6 and now we have under number 5 and the soldier shoots again go again is 5 more than 2 it is make it 4 and uh, sh make him shoot again and go again is 4 more than 2 yes is 3 more than 2 it is Na minus 1 the soldier shoots and now we go again to the condition and we ask is 2 more than 2 it is not at the time um, that this happens uh, the the whole loop is no longer uh, processed and we move to the line 14 so the soldier stops shooting and we sleep for a random period of time that is uh, a number from 0 to 5 round it either up or down uh, depending on the on the digits and then we add 5 more seconds so the soldier can sleep any time between 5 and 10 seconds approximately and once uh, that period is over we loop the entire thing again we generate another number that gives us anything from 2 to 9 we let the soldier shoot his rounds and then we sleep the longer period of time again so basically what we are doing here is the soldier shoots several shots in a rapid succession and then he waits for a longer period of time instead of the static uh, shooting every two seconds or so we now have some rounds and then a pause and because we are generating the number uh, we are basically generating a new number every single time the loop uh, goes through we are also making sure that the rounds will always be different so one time he will shoot five rounds then he will wait uh, seven seconds and then he will have like three rounds and wait eight seconds the, the numbers are always different and that makes uh, that makes their shooting much more interesting and much more believable because the soldiers aren't robots that uh, fire all those all the same they do change their habits from a time to time so this will be very interesting to see how much it has improved um, since the last version and all we have done is basically just used random web random uh, not not weapons but random numbers that's all there is to it there's basically nothing nothing else i'm just working with numbers over here and it has really improved a lot the ai shooting Right, let's go to the glasses and the spawn. These are the two that uh, control the player. And I have added uh, some uh, some comments over here so that you can see what is uh, what is the extra stuff, what has been added. So basically, I have uh, the basic script from before. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we wait until um, he has the glasses on and then we go through the effects then we wait until he has the glasses off we delete those effects and the whole loop uh, can go again what is new is um, the amount of those effects basically I have added a bunch of effects with some pretty interesting and maybe uh, some some really useful effects that you might find quite quite good for your mission as well so um, at this moment we are waiting for the player to have the glasses when he has them we can start coding the effects so the first extra stuff that I have added is this fatigue effect it's again a pre-scripted uh, bohemian interactive function I'm just using it and it's um, it looks like a short sh short uh, partial fade in and out with black it's really interesting 
and it doesn't go the old way through like uh, if you use cut text then it uh, fades the entire screen and this just happens on the outside so I really want to, wanted to use that and I think that it doesn't look it doesn't look bad at all so this is the fatigue effect then we play the music this has all been done uh, previously as well we are launching this pawn.sqf as well and another extra uh, column of effects so this is at the start we are using the post process effects i haven't talked about them yet and i think i might because these are really good if you want to make your mission look very good it doesn't do anything um like functional it just looks good so we are if we are making the effect of film grain this adds a subtle and small grain particles on the screen so it looks more like like a movie or a television screen and this is uh, just the, these numbers are just the basically the settings of the effect like the size of the particles and all of that stuff i'm not really gonna go through each of these numbers you can find all of that in the on the wiki or i will talk about it in the in some tutorial in the future and we are committing the effect right away we want it to appear straight away and at the same time we are uh, making more effects i have also added this effect that is basically copied from the establishing shot script from the bohemia interactive function for establishing shot and it basically adds the the checkerboard that you can see on the menus or in that establishing shot uav shots or you can even see that on the main menu as well i think it's really useful one and I have added that as well over here so we have a little bit more effects. Um, at the, ne at the next uh, part is another loop. We are having another while and do uh, statement over here and we are basically um, using the same um, the same condition as always. While the player has his goggles on we can do some stuff. So while he has the, the goggles, we are making some calculations over here and then we are using the dynamic text to display these uh, calculations on the screen. You will see that later in the mission, it looks really cool and I think that it's really fun to, to actually uh, write something like this. Because it's not really difficult, you can see that it's like three lines and it actually looks really really well in the mission so what i'm doing here is i'm uh, converting the position from the from the middle of the player screen to the world and i'm then con i'm then extracting that location to the variable this is really um i don't know how to explain it basically um when you have uh, the middle of your screen that points to some location on the map. It always does. You always are looking at something and that something has some defined position. And I'm using that number and I'm comparing it with the position of the player. So basically what this variable contains here is the distance between the player and the location that he's looking at right now because it's in the middle of his screen. So let's say that I'm looking at a house that is a hundred meters away from me. So if that house is in the middle of my screen and then, then this location will be some number, uh, my position will be some number that will be uh, different by 100 and the distance between the two of us will be 100. So the this um, local variable will be containing the number 100. Then I'm making a string over here. Again, I'm using a local variable for that and I'm defining an empty string that I'm going to be using uh, in the next, in the next um, command. And now I'm asking if uh, the distance between the two of us over here is more than 6000. And that's basically only because if the player looks at the sky, 
the distance between him and the sky is about 10,000 meters. And I don't want him to believe that uh, when he looks like at the sky, the distance is like 9,980 meters or something. It shows some really crazy numbers. You can test that out for yourself. I don't want that to happen. So basically, when the distance is more than 6,000, uh, then I don't want to show anything. So the string will be only these three dashes. And it won't show any actual numbers. But if it's not, and it's less than 6,000, then I can, of course, uh, display any number I want. So the string is actually the rounded distance. So I round the number to a whole number, and then I make a string out of it uh, with the using of the command str that basically puts the equations around anything else and makes the string out of that thing. So now I have a string with the perfect number that I that I need with the distance between me and the and my screen. And now I'm just using the dynamic text to display that string. So I'm using the function. The first parameter is the text itself. So it's this string. It's either the number or the dashes. Then I'm using the save zone X and Y to display it on every resolution. Hopefully that works. And then the time for which the, um, the text is displayed, that's 0.01 seconds because I want to update this information really quickly and I don't need the, I don't need the, text to, to be displayed for a long time. I need it to be actual distance between the uh, between the player and the screen. So I'm looping this in 0.01 seconds continually and I'm updating the text as well in that uh, exact same time. And the zero over here, that is um, the length of the fade in effect. And because I update the number so quickly, I don't have time for any fade in and fade out. I left that to zero. So this is uh, going on and on while I have the goggles on. And because this entire loop will end when the player takes off the goggles, I don't need any more uh, conditions for that. I already know that once I get out of this loop, the player doesn't have his goggles anymore. So that's why I, w I could I could leave all of this out and I move to line 32 where I just remove the the texture, the, the checkerboard texture. I remove the film grain, both of these. I disable this and I cover this with just plain uh, resource. And I ask if the unit is still alive, then delete it. Even if it's not, do nothing. And I repeat the entire thing again and again. So that's uh, basically what I have added to the glasses. Now let's look at the spawn. I haven't done too much with this. I have basically again just used some uh, numbers. So at the start I have defined one extra variable that is uh, killed and I have set it to zero. So basically every time the player puts on the glasses this script is called and the variable killed is set to zero. So every time you put on the glasses, uh, this all uh, resets. And then I have uh, another loop. It goes again continually. And I am creating some random numbers over here. I'm then adding them one to another. One is negative, one is positive. So I get some random number. It can be negative, it can be positive, it can be zero, it can be anything. and I'm creating the unit on a random position based on these numbers. So I'm basically creating a line of random numbers and I'm creating the, the soldier on the line of these numbers. So it can be anywhere from between minus 9 plus 15 of course. And other than that I haven't done anything more to the unit. I also have used the command set there for direction and I'm turning him uh, against the player so basically he's taking the direction of the player then minus 180 that's directly against him if you know some geometry then you are gonna be absolutely uh, clear on that 
and then I do exactly the same way as always. I wait until he's no longer alive, so he's either deleted by the script glasses.sqf over here at the end, or he's just killed by the player. And then I ask again, does he have the goggles on? If he doesn't, I can go away. If he does, I can spawn another one. So I wait uh, a second and a half, then I delete the then I delete the uh, unit with this spawn effect. This is the virtual reality spawn effect. It's um, you can see that in the virtual reality scenarios. It's you will see that in the mission as well. It's just the effect that they use for spawning and despawning all the units. So it looks more like a virtual reality. Then I wait three seconds and I add one to the killed uh, variable. And basically by that I keep track of the units that have been killed. Uh, so if you kill four uh, four guys, I know I know that because I have added four times uh, the number one to the variable killed. And if the variable killed is more than five, so it must be six or more, then I will display the message. All right, good enough, and. Uh, turn the complete to true so that you can end the mission actually. And once I exit out of the of the loop itself, I display the virtual units killed. I use the local variable killed for that. And basically I exit out of that out of that loop by these exit with commands that exit the current scope. So basically once I take off the goggles I exit out of this scope, out of the loop, and I can display the virtual units killed. So that is happening each time I, I do that. And you will all you will all see that in the mission as well. And it, re it really uh, works well. And it adds something else to the mission. Of course, you can work much more with this. And you can add a lot more stuff into this mission. But I just wanted to show you that you can really take the basic uh, mission and improve it significantly with little effort. Alright, let's go to the mission itself. I think that we are ready to see all of this in action. And I will show you what it does basically in relation to these scripts. Okay, so let's see you in the editor in a few seconds. Okay, welcome back. Um, we are ready for the preview. There is nothing else to change. We can go straight in and have a look at the mission itself. So let's continue. The beginning will be pretty much the same. And the first thing that is going to that is gonna be changed is the actual shooting of the soldiers and then the cutscene as well. So you can already hear that the soldiers are shooting in short rounds instead of one bullet each time. You can now also see that we have some really short uh, cutscene over here instead of just the plain text but I'm gonna go and have a look at the soldiers and what they are doing you can hear that each one of them has a different number generated for him and they also fire uh, differently each time so this one shot one time only and the other dude didn't shoot at all and these numbers are always generated differently for them so it really looks like it really looks like they aren't just robots and that's exactly what i wanted so yeah let these guys shoot what they want they will do so indefinitely they don't have a problem with that and we will take the goggles on and watch all of these effects that i have added to this thing and you can see the checkerboard, you might even be able to see the grain. I don't know how that is rendered in the video um, and how YouTube processes this thing. But if you try this mission in your editor, you will see that very clearly. It's a very subtle grain, but it is very easily seen on the sky and on like one colored, one colored uh, surfaces. Other than that, we have the track the tracking over here at the top of the screen uh, we have the distance thing this is calculated uh, really carefully and if you look at the sky it doesn't show anything it just shows the three dashes 
So let's shoot some of these guys and you will see that they are they are generated on random places on a line. That line is basically if I had to draw it, that line would be something like this, a diag diagonal line that these guys spawn in because I'm just adding or subtracting numbers from their from the position and I'm just moving them on two axes at the same time so I can't have them move on one axis that's not what I have done so let's shoot a bit more of them until the commander tell us, tells us that it's good enough okay so I can end the mission now but uh, first of all I will take off the glasses you can see that the virtual reality thing had disappeared all of these effects are gone right now and I have killed seven virtual units. I know that because the game has informed me. If I take the goggles back on and I spawn another unit, kill uh, let's say two of them. Okay, now take the glasses back. Virtual units killed are two and the units have disappeared as well. So this is working pretty much exactly the same as the previous one, but it looks much better. It looks uh, improved. It looks more smooth. The mission is much more enjoyable. And with a little bit more work, it could actually be a solid training mission or some prologue for your campaign where you uh, can welcome new players and introduce them to the Arma shooting a world. So I think that I can end the mission right here and right now. There is nothing more that I could show you. The mission doesn't contain anything else. I hope that uh, you find these effects a little, at least a little interesting. Download the mission if you want. The links will be in the description as always. And I think that this is it for this video. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you all in the next one. Comment, like and share and have a great day.